Welcome to the Statistic NDD YouTube channel. Today I'm really excited to show you a number of ways to make your box plots in R more informative. So the data I'm using for these examples come from the chart2000.com website. Uh, it contains music charts from the years 2000 to 2020 and the data I downloaded is called chart 2000 song year and it contains the top 100 songs for each year from 2000 to 2020. So note that some songs may appear twice in the data if they made the top 100 in two years, which are usually two successive years. Right, um, the format I'm using for this presentation is for the first time in my videos a storyboard, which is implemented by the Flex dashboard package. So I really like this format. It gives me this navigation bar at the top, and then we have a main area with a chart and then on the right hand side there's some more space to display the R code and um, some notes. Right, so here it's the only page without a chart. I just display the data and you see it's displayed in an interactive way. This is implemented by the DT package and the data table function. So here I can, for example, type um, an artist name at here and, and the data is filtered and I can look at it. Also, I can filter by each column um, select artists here for example the uh, field gets widened when i click on the first name and for the numeric variables i get a slider to limit the range if i just want to look at a specific range of the data so a nice way of displaying data in such an interactive format right um, the main variable we are interested in is indicative revenue so according to the website chart2000.com this is an attempt to measure the complete revenue generated by a song or album over a certain period. So it does take into account inflation and currency conversion um, and it can approximately be related to the total revenue generated across the whole music chain in thousands of dollars. So this is the dependent variable that we're going to use today. Right, um, what did I do to filter out my data? I want to present you the five most successful artists in this specific time span. The top five in terms of total score, so total indicative revenue. Right, so let's start with our first basic plot. This is a basic ggplot2 chart. I didn't want to use the default theme gray, so I used theme solarized from the GG themes package by Jeffrey B. Arnold. So shout out to him. And I made a few tweaks to the theme. You see it here on the right hand side, theme update. So I removed the X axis ticks as they're not needed here. I also removed the vertical grid lines to make the chart clearer because we have no trouble here uh, reading the X axis, I think. And I also rotated the X axis labels by 90 degrees to fit the names here. Um, and I chose the theme update function so that I don't have to specify these tweaks in each plot call again, but just once. Apart from that, it's just a basic box plot uh, with aesthetics and labels for title and axis. Right, so how can we convey more information by tweaking this plot? The first one is um, here we have no indication of um, the data, the number of cases or n number of songs per artist. So the first option is to specify this var width equals true argument in the GeoBox plot call. So now if I switch between the two charts, you, they're exactly in the same position on the two pages. So you see what changes and what stays the same. The box for Rihanna stays the same and the other ones are reduced in width a little bit because they have fewer cases. So the data are sorted from most songs in the top 100, Rihanna to Ed Sheeran who has fewer songs in the top 100. Right, so this is quite a simple tweak, var width equals true, um, to um, use different widths of the boxes. But it's also interesting to have a numeric information on, on the ends, so we do that here on the next page. 
display ends numerically. Of course, we could do that just with ggplot2 and maybe a bit of dplyr or tidyverse syntax, calculate number of ends and then display them with gm text or gm label. But here um, I'm a bit lazy and I just use the stat underscore n underscore text function from the end of stats package by Stephen Millet and Alexander Kovarik. So this is a very simple way, just specifying stat n text and we get the number of n for each box. So now we see Rihanna has 24 songs in the top 100 in this data set and Ed Sheeran has 13 and the others are in between. Right, um, the next way to improve this plot is to make it interactive. Here you see when I move the mouse over the plot, um, it's a static plot so nothing happens. But we can make it interactive using the great Plotly package by Carson Sievert. Now the plot lo looks a little bit different. Um, also I didn't use all these specifications that I had made in ggplot because here I decided to use the plain Plotly syntax. I just wanted to show you an example of this. Of course you can also use the um, ggplotly function to transform a ggplot object to plotly, but here it's a simple plotly call with plotly syntax directly. So now what happens is when I move the mouse over a box, um, for one band we, we get exact numbers of the um, key statistics that were calculated for the box plot. So here for the black eyed piece we see minimum q1, median q3 and maximum and here for Ed Sheeran um, we also get the value for the outlier. So this is one way of um, conveying all this information without cluttering your chart too much and the reader can decide which numbers she or he wants to read in more detail. Right, um, but note that um, Plotly calculates outliers a little bit differently than ggplot so this is something that we have to keep in mind. Unfortunately, um, definitions uh, vary how outliers are defined. So here you see in the ggplot call, we have two outliers for Ed Sheeran and one for the black eyed peas and one for pink and for maroon. And here Plotly only shows two outliers, one for Ed Sheeran and one for maroon five. So um, calculations or definitions um, differ a little bit between different packages. Right, um, now we could say, okay, talking about outliers, it would be interesting to know which songs are defined as outliers. So we can do that here. Um, this is my fourth page. And to do this, I use a user defined function. It was found on Stack Overflow. So you can find the link here. Um, a user-defined function that determines whether a point is an outlier and if so it returns the name of the song and if not it returns NA and then we can use this new variable um, to label our points. So we have a mutate call here that defines this outlier variable using this user-defined function and then in the geom text call we label by this outlier variable and then we get the names of these songs that are defined as outliers. Note that here I also chose to use color to differentiate between the different artists to make it clearer. Uh, I think it's still readable without color also, but that's also an addition here. Right, so the next um, idea is something that I really like, and that is to display the whole data alongside the boxes. So a box plot is a typical plot for aggregated information to give you a quick overview of a distribution without um, looking at too much detail. But you know that you can get exactly the same box for different underlying distributions. For example, you could have a, a sort of normally distributed data uh, where most of the points are around the middle and in, in a normal distribution mean and median are the same. And you could also have a U-shaped distribution, for example, with a peak below um, the middle and a peak above the middle, and you could get the same box. Um, so it's a good idea to look at the underlying distribution, and you can do that by displaying the individual data points. And we do that here using the geom jitter function. We could have used geom point, but jitter moves the points a little bit apart by random to reduce overplotting. Another idea to reduce overplotting is to use um, 
alpha, which is opacity. We do that here as well, so you see um, there's some transparency in the points, so we get a better idea of where data points are plotted on top of each other. So I really like that to um, have both aggregated data and um, a detailed look on the distributions. The idea is inspired by Edward Tufte, and you can have a look at his great book, Envisioning Information, for example. So it's like combining macro and micro levels. Note that there's a challenge here in that both the GeoMbox plot and the GeoMjitter call plot the outliers. So we have to make sure that the outliers get plotted only once. And we do that by specifying outlier color equals NA in the GeoMbox plot call. I once spent quite a lot of time wondering why I had two outliers in a plot where there was only one outlier on the data. So this is why. Right, um, the next idea I want to present you is how to use aesthetics to include information on another variable. We do that here. The variable I chose is to display whether a song was number one for a year in any country. Several countries are encoded in the data, um, the US charts, for example, but also UK and, and some others. So here we want to see if a song was number one for a specific year. And I think this is quite interesting, looking at the plot. Um, for example, we see that for Ed Sheeran, his top two songs were number one, but on contrast, for Maroon 5 and Pink, and also for Rihanna, their top song was not number one in any country for that year. So this can be an interesting additional information. Note that here I use two aesthetics for the same piece of information. I use both shape and color to display whether a song made it to number one to really make the distinction visually clear. Some people might focus more on colors, others might focus more on shapes and both are aided here to make the distinction. Of course, we could use different information uh, for different aesthetics. So I could use another variable um, and encode one variable by shape and another variable by color, for example, but I'd be very careful not to overload the data and think carefully about my audience if they can decode and if they want to decode all this information. But it is possible to, to add more information to the plot. So let me know if you find that useful and um, yeah, if you plan to use this technique. Um, note that here, um, the two aesthetics are both displayed in one legend. So this legend displays both color and shape. Um, so you have to, to take care to achieve that. If you don't take care, then you'll get two different legends, which wouldn't look nice in this case. So there are two conditions that have to be met to make this happen. Um, the two legends must refer to the same variable and they must have the same name. So here, the name is not a variable in the data set, but a user defined name, number one, any country question mark. So you see in the code that I have to specify this name both in scale color brewer for the color information and scale shape discrete for the shape aesthetic. Right. The next idea to add more information to a box plot is to display the mean value also. You know that the horizontal line in the box relates to the median. And if you have a perfectly normal distribution, mean and median will be identical, but they might not be. And this is also an interesting piece of information to look at to get an idea of your distribution, um, how mean and median compare. So here we see that for the black eyed peas, mean and median seem to be identical. Whereas for Ed Sheeran, for example, the mean is considerably higher than the median. And this makes sense because there are two outliers that strongly influence the mean, also taking into account the small number of cases, n equals 13, um, whereas the median is a more robust measure that is not influenced by the outliers. Right, how did I achieve that? I just used the stat summary function and specified the mean function and a color and a shape, and also indicated what this star means in the plot caption here, mean. 
Right, so the next step, taking it a bit further, would be to include statistical tests between the groups. This can be complicated, but uh, we get helped greatly by the ggstats plot package by Indrajit Patil, so shout out to him. And here you see, um, I need very little code to um, receive a lot of information on statistical tests. Um, so this is like for a scientific publication um, where you really have to specify which tests you do and, and provide all the statistical measures. So this package takes care of that for us. Um, you, you see that the sentence is quite short to, to get such a sophisticated output. The function here is ggbetweenStats, plot type box. So specifying a confidence level, but we don't have to do much more to get this detailed output. Uh, note that here I use the default theme that is used in the ggstats plot package, which is theme BW from ggplot2. So um, it's not our solarized theme anymore that we use in the other plots. Right, um, in this case, we see there are no statistically significant differences between the five bands. We have very low case numbers and we have a lot of variation within each artist, so that makes sense. You see the overall p-value here is 0.649. Um, but I wanted to show you another example where a test is significant, so that's the case here. I reduced the number of artists that I compared to three, and I compared Ed Sheeran uh, to Justin Timberlake and Miley Cyrus, and we see for these three groups there's one significant group difference between Justin Timberlake and Miley Cyrus. Um, and this is how the ggstats plot package displays it. It shows which groups are compared and gives the p-value for this comparison. And we see the p-value is corrected. So um, it is taken into account that we compared several groups. So a very useful package, I think, for especially for scientific publications to um, display the tests in detail. Right, and the last example I want to show you is um, we have bands or artists on the x-axis. Wouldn't it be nice to show images as labels? And it's quite easy to do that. We see that on this plot here. Um, so we still see the names, Rihanna and Pink, Maroon 5, Black Eyed Peas and Ed Sheeran, but we also see the images. Um, and this is made possible by the great GG text package by Klaus Wilke. The main use case, I think, is to style your text with HTML styles like um, colors or bold words and things like that and rotate text but you can also use it to um, provide images instead of text for the axis which is what we do here. It is possible to supply the function with a URL to download the images as you create the plot. In this case I decided against it. I downloaded the pictures beforehand. One reason is also that this download function can be a bit tricky on Windows so it depends on the operating system. Um, so here I downloaded the pictures beforehand and stored them in my project folder and then I provide a named vector of labels. Um, the names have to correspond to the groups in the data set, um, what the artists are called there, and then I provide the image in this HTML style image source. And then I need two functions to display the images on the x-axis. One is I pass on the labels argument in the scale x discrete call and the other one I have to adjust the axis.text.x argument in the theme function and the theme function needs the element markdown function here to make this functionality possible and element markdown is not part of ggplot2 but comes from the ggtext package so element markdown is the key trick here to display the images. Well, I guess that was it. I hope you found this useful. All the best for your own data exploration and data visualization. Um, let me know if there was anything useful in this video for you and how you like this format with the storyboard powered by um, Markdown and the Flex Dashboard package. And yeah, all the best. See you next time. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. It really helps. Thank you. Goodbye.